EEG reading rounds. For those of you who are subscribers to this channel, I welcome you back and those who've just logged in for the first time, I welcome you aboard. This is an interesting OSCE for those of you preparing to take a neurology or EEG exam. I will scan through this EEG and I suggest you take a piece of paper and pencil and start taking notes about the anterior to posterior differentiation, background rhythm, reactivity, try to identify abnormalities and then describe the distribution of these abnormalities. I will review the EEG and help you pin down once you've uh, gone through and taken your impression, written your impression and clinical correlation. I will help you review this EEG. We will pin down the single most striking abnormality. Now if you get it on your own, you pass the station. Let me give you a brief history about this person. So this is a 52 year old man who presents with a three month history of recurrent episodes of loss of consciousness. He has been witnessed once or twice and the witness has described that he suddenly loses tone in his body, falls down and he has the, some convulsive movements that mostly affect his upper extremities. So let's start here. So this is the EG, and I'll start moving on to the EG. Most of you have seen EGs in the past so odd numbers represent recording from the left side even numbers from the right side and the Z, uh, the electrodes that end with a Z, these are recording from the midline. And obviously this is the EKG channel so you can see the EKG rate and rhythm here. So let's move on here. So try to compare the left hemisphere with the right hemisphere. See if you can identify a posterior dominant rhythm. Look in the posterior channels. If try to identify the state of the patient. Is there, are there some clues where you can say whether this person is awake or asleep? Do you see any abnormality? Is it lateralized? Is it localized? Make sure you look through all the channels. So regardless of what you see, don't disregard any of those channels. The most important information may be in a place where you're least suspecting to find it. So this is, a, as I described, this person has had these episodes for three months. He had been treated with anti-epileptic medications and these episodes persistent, persisted regardless of treatment. Obviously, people start thinking about other causes of loss of consciousness. So write your differential diagnosis that if a person has episodic loss of consciousness, what are the different possibilities? Epileptic seizures can be one possibility. What about other possibilities? Can hypoglycemia cause loss of consciousness? What about sudden drop in blood pressure? What about a cardiac cause? So think about the differential diagnosis. If you keep thinking about the differential diagnosis, there's a possibility you'll get this diagnosis right and you'll pass this OSCE station. Okay, enough of that. So let's keep moving on this EEG. Have you been able to identify any specific abnormality? Is there any change on the EEG from the time that we started reviewing it? Keep in mind whether you're looking at whether the person is awake or asleep. Be very vigilant about each and every channel on this recording. So let's go back. Did something change here on the EG? What about here? Does this portion of the EG look any different than what we saw early on? What happened to the EG right here? Okay. So I'll give you just a few more seconds. Write your impressions. And we are about to go to the beginning of the record and review the CG.
okay so I'll hold the cursor here I'll drag it all the way to the beginning okay so let's start here you, you do see some algorithm so you s let's count here one two three four five six seven eight almost eight hertz it's not always necessary to see it in p4o2 you can see it in c4p4 so that was on the right side on the left side it is not as well formed you see a lot of theta frequencies in the background this is all electrode artifact and muscle artifact that is there you see delta frequencies here so these are obvious delta frequencies here now the one thing that is most striking in the CEG is to look at the ECG so ECG can provide information that may not always be available on the EEG so let's determine the rate of the ECG the heart rate of this patient so let's count 10 seconds so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and count the QRS complexes in those 10 seconds and multiply it by 6 so you get the heart rate so that is 1 2 3 4 5 5 times 6 is 30 so the heart rate at the beginning of the recording is just 30 beats per minute so this is something that should make you suspicious whether there is something wrong with the heart rather than with the brain obviously the EG is abnormal you see slowing in both the left and the right hemispheres but on top of it the most striking thing is this uh, heart rate you see a very slow heart rate I'm dragging the EG a little faster so that we can come to the abnormality sooner than later and as we keep going here you see the heart rate keeps getting slower so something is not right with this patient's heart okay I'll keep moving and moving and when we get to the most significant find okay in fact look over here so what happens here you see a long pause almost three seconds between these QRS complex so there is some degree some kind of a conduction block here so heart rate gets slower and slower and look what happens here another almost four seconds two three four seconds of a pause between these two QRS complexes so if the heart does not beat the, it does not pump blood to the brain and obviously that causes hypoperfusion so if you do not have oxygen to the brain what do you expect to see the EEG gets slow so another one two three four second pause another three to four second pause here and it continues one two three four seconds and what you're going to see ultimately is this person goes into a cardiac arrest so this is again a very long pause so the more lo the longer the diff distance between QRS complexes there would be less amount of blood that is pumped to the brain less oxygenation to the brain and this leads to generalized slowing on the EEG and same thing happens if you record an EEG in someone with even with a vasovagal syncope so this I would say if this person goes into a syncope this would be a cardiogenic syncope but if someone has a vasovagal syncope you'll see something very similar the EEG will get extremely slow so look over here long pause one two three four four seconds here and then this person right at this point this person goes into a cardiac arrest so when there is a hypoperfusion you start slowing in a you see slowing on the EEG in a generalized distribution but once there is a complete cessation of uh, a heart rhythm the EEG will go flat so this is exactly what you see here so it evolved from the slow activity to a completely flat activity this is when the EEG technician panicked called a code blue in the hospital and the patient then started getting resuscitation so this is a complete cardiac arrest and you see the EEG has gone completely flat and this patient got a CPR in within the within the EEG lab 
and uh, they were able to successfully resuscitate this patient. So the message here is whenever you are shown an EEG please do not disregard the EKG. Make sure you talk to your technologist and ensure that they record a good sample of EKG. Discuss this EKG, review the EKG, write the rate, write the rhythm. Anyone who starts presenting with episodes of loss of consciousness where you do not have a very clear explanation, someone in their 50s or 60s, you do an MRI which is normal, you have uh, a, do a good examination and the history is not clear, make sure you do a 24-hour holter or some kind of an EKG recording so you do not miss out on a primary cardiac problem. Well, that's it, folks. I hope to see you again, and it has been fun, and thank you for all your nice comments. Thank you.